Sup, 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 my name is Reeve for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. Welcome to my top 10 countdown on the top 10 cards that should come off the ban list. Basically ASAP. Now, the way this works is the number 1 spot is the most deserving, number 10 is the least deserving on this list out of all the cards. And yes, we do have a huge ban list, and I will talk about a few cards I left off that are still in the ban section that I could have, you know, put on the list. But what I'm trying to do with this a whole list here, I wasn't trying to do anything crazy. I was trying to basically sit down and say, okay, what's balanced enough to come back or what makes the most sense? So, obvious things like the Dragon Rulers, outside of Tempest, need to stay banned. Stratos, uh, it would push heroes, and then heroes would need limitations. They're good where they are. So leave Stratos where he is. I know everyone wants him back, but leave him where he is. And as per Witch of the Black Forest, even though she may be slow, she does get a lot of the, the monarchs, so that's instantly a problem right there. And finally, Cyber and Fiber. Well, Cyber Jar, there's a lot of monsters that get benefits off special summons, and that speeds up a lot of slower decks, which can cause issues. And it may not seem that way, but we have a new Flip Searcher, and Fiber Jar just is a constant reset button, and it's annoying. I also left off Lava Low Chain because of its new interactions with certain upcoming decks, just for the moment. Just for the moment, don't worry. I, of course, you know how I feel about it. I still feel it was unjust. I also did leave off Construct because Construct did not make it fun to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Sorry, Shadow players. I also left off the obvious Royal Oppression because Royal Oppression just broke. So, with that all said, let's go down to our number 10 spot, which has been on your screen. Monster Reborn! Now, why Monster Reborn over everything else I could have mentioned? It's simple. The game is moving forward into a pendulum situation where most of the decks are pendulum based. So Monster Reborn helps a lot of the lower tiers and not the higher. And that's the mindset of, hey, we don't need Monster Reborn no more. It came out in the legendary, you know, the Yugi Legendary Collection. Uh, I call it the Legendary Collection. And our players, you know, want something to spice up the game. This will get the nostalgia players back too because, hey, I can play Monster Reborn. And for those meta decks, that they use the pendulums for their exceeds, they could bring it back. So it does. I don't fully believe it should come back, but as the number 10 spot, it makes the most sense out of everything else that could be mentioned from least chance to highest chance of what should come back in the order. My number 9 pick is Super Rejuvenation. Super Rejuvenation is pretty simple. Outside of Exodia, you're really not probably not going to see it. Maybe Blue Eyes. Blue Eyes would get the biggest benefit of this. And yes, I know Blue Eyes has amazing support right now, and this would only push it that much further to help get outs that the deck could truly need. And yes, if Super Rejuvenation was to come back to 1, perhaps, maybe then if they draw it, it makes the deck so much faster. So I'm still kind of on the fence about this and Monster Reborn, but outside of everything else on the list, these two make the most sense, being in their spots. Number one being like the, you know, the best chance. Number ten being the uh, kind of chance. So Super Rejuvenation. I will also mention that Tribe Infecting Virus is not on this list only because of its interactions with Mermels and, of course, the Prince. So you do not want to trigger that shit. So it needs to stay gone for quite a while longer. Alright, moving on. Number eight, Cyberstein. This is one I've talked about on Banlist Prediction videos where I believe it could easily come back. You have to pay 5,000 life points to get a fusion, and the most you would get out of that is Exoteria. I understand that. But we have Fiendish Chains, we have the Sal Notice coming out, we have Ghost Ogres, we have, well, Ghost Ogres are technically not going to get it. We have Effect Villers, Breakthrough Skills, we have multiple ways that we did not have when this guy was legal. And 5,000 life points. You know what I do when I see 5,000 life points? I one-shot the Cyberstein, say, good game, sir, have a nice day, this is the game over right here. And if anything, it's the exterior that needs to be banned, so Cyberstein has nothing to basically be used with. And the OCG does have Cyberstein, and it's at 3. So to be fair, we could see that shift here to happen for Cyberstein to make his return off the ban list in a much later date. So if you see it in the gold series, there you go. My number seven is pretty much going to be the hot debate. I was kind of on the fence on Harpy's Feather Duster or Cold Wave, but looking at it from Konami's perspective, I would say Cold Wave. 
OCG does have uh, Harpy's Feather Duster over Cold Wave because it's, I guess, it's technically a little bit easier to deal with. But in the TCG, we've we've done the Denko Sekas, so it's pretty much Cold Wave on crack, you know, except in a monster form that constantly is up. So Cold Wave at this point could easily come back to one, not really cause a problem, and everyone has a Cold Wave to play, freeze up your opponent from activating anything, make your turn safely, and then attempt to take out your opponent. If you can't, well, then you're going to lose in the frosty ways of the Cold Wave. But when it comes down to it, Cold Wave is one of those cards that, honestly, we do need some kind of back row dis uh, disruption. Whether that be Harpy's Feather Dust or whether that be Cold Wave, it could be either one. I went with Cold Wave because it's the lesser of two evils. And for the people who will say Giant Trunade, you could reset your Pendulum Scales and reuse their effects. Cleefort Scout is a big example of that. So that's pretty much the reason why I decided not to mention Giant Trunade and only Cold Wave and Feather Duster. Heavy Storm is kind of the same thing. You could destroy your Pendulums, reset them, no fucks given, and then go from there. Especially with Pendulum Call, you can protect your own damn Pendulums and go from there too and fucking Heavy Storm your opponent. They can't do shit about it. So, Cold Wave, lesser of all the evils. Trust me when it comes to that. My number six spot is Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. I do not believe it was a just hit. He should, well, I would mention him higher, but there's a lot more deserving cards right now to come into the, the game than Exiton Knight. But Exiton Knight did not really do jack shit against Pendulums. Konami just wanted to hit it because it was rank 4, and player base, a uh, good chunk of them just wanted it banned and probably wrote in and said, I want this shit banned, this shit's wrecking my day. No one's playing anything but Exiton Knight. To be fair, if you're playing a meta deck and you can't get over Exiton Knight, there's something wrong. Your deck should not be called meta. I'm truly sorry. But to be transparent, it's not that good. It blows up shit, sure. Then you can't do any more damage. It could do it twice, sure, I get that. But you take no more damage. And you basically... That's what happens when you overextend. If you overextend, he's gonna blow shit up. If you don't overextend, then he's easy to deal with. It's not that hard. But I don't know why, still to this day, Konami decided to hit him. But... He's one that should easily come back because he's not busted. He's okay to come back to the metagame, or just the game in general, and not really cause any waves, you know? So it's one of those things that you don't really have to worry about. My number five pick could cause waves, depending on when he comes back, if he ever does, is Dark Magician of Chaos who got the errata. And his errata does, I guess, help a little bit with what he was doing, but Monster Reborn, Pod Duality, I'm um, sorry, Pod Avarice, why am I saying Duality? Pod Avarice, Harpy's Feather Duster, Raigeki, well, only Raigeki remains. All the other big, powerful spell cards this guy would bring back during his era are gone. What are you going to really bring back? A Pendulum spell? Maybe a, I don't know, a Raigeki? But if you're playing meta, Raigeki doesn't hurt you that much. And the real benefit of Dark Magician of Chaos is to those Magician decks. Oh, go against Cosmos, but he destroys them. Yes, get floating. Get floating, they say. You can do floating. And then he goes away. He's got a 2800 body that's not really up to snuff compared to what today's standards are. And I would like to see how he interjects himself into the meta, if even at all. For the more casual fan base and for the older nostalgic players in all of us, it allows us to go back to a simpler time where we were playing Dark Magician of Chaos, but give him a new flair, make Dark Magician of Chaos decks. And yes, he's available in the OCG for play, and he hasn't done shit there. Maybe outside of a Magician deck, but still. When it comes down to it, Dark Magician of Chaos is really not going to break the game any further than it's already been broken. It's not going to power creep it. It's going to bring interest and new life into a lot of spellcaster decks. And that's what Dark Magician Chaos really does offer. What decks besides maybe Monarchs are really going to tribute for him? Most decks will Pendulum summon him. So yeah, he may be used as a one of, kind of like how BLS is pretty often a one of since its return to actually be used in, I don't know, a couple meta decks, but still. Dark Magician Chaos should easily come back. 
My number four pick is Thousand Eyes Restrict. Yes, you can instant fusion him, but let me ask you, would you instant fusion him? Or would you rather instant fusion Norton, which is going to get you a rank four, which will do ten times more? And to be fair, Norton opens the doorways to Cyber Dragon Infinity, where Thousand Eyes does not. At most, what Thousand Eyes will do is come out, suck up a monster, and die. Congratulations. You paid a thousand life points to deal with one monster on the field. And you can't do shit afterwards. This is a long overdue return to the game. Instant Fusion, if anything, does need the limit because Norden, if that needs to be dealt with. But that's because of Norden. Thousand Eyes Restrict, on the other hand, doesn't really do anything nowadays that we haven't seen done before except suck up a monster and die. And again... I'm afraid that again, you don't get the attack, you can suck up a monster, and die. And let's be honest, who's really going to try to ritual summon a relinquish, bring out a thousand eyes idol, and fuse them together? Maybe you were teching the thousand eyes idol with the king of the swamp to make the thousand eyes restrict, but even then, that's pretty ballsy, and I salute you for it. But again... Thousand Eyes Restrict is just really dated to the point he could come off the ban list, get put at 3, and no one would really even be playing him. It's a Magician of Faith thing. He's been there for so long, he don't even remember what his name is. Okay, cheesy jokes aside, let's move on to number 3. My number 3 spot is Sangin. As many of you know, I've always loved Sangin. But when it comes down to it, Sangin is just, again, one of those things that is pretty damn outdated. Sure, there's a big, you know, pool of monsters he could search out. Eh, one of them is probably a Cosmo. Is it, or, let's be honest with each other. Cosmo's really going to play this? No. They have plenty of ways of searching already. Are Yang Zing going to play this? No, most likely not, because they have plenty of ways of getting to their monsters. You're going to waste your normal summon for a search? Cool. Uh, at best, it's using Synchrons, which the deck could use a little bit of boost. And you get one off the ban list. What else can we use Sangin in? Hmm. There's not too many decks we can actually- Oh, Burning Abyss! That's probably the best thing we can use him in. Okay. Burning Abyss has been hit. When, uh, when the new support comes back, throw him at one. That's pretty much Konami logic. What else would you do with Sangin is the question. There's really not too much you can do with him. He's slow. He's f he only got a thousand attack. He's pretty fragile. And he got destroyed by Tour Guide. Because she said she loved him and he didn't. And, you know, she didn't. And then he got on the ban list. <laughs> but, let's be honest with each other. Sangin's one of those cards that can easily come back into the metagame. Get your own effect power. That's the best thing you could do. Or Ghost Ogre. That's the best thing you could do. And, if you knew Sangin was in the game, then Mind Crush popularity would rise by 5%. Yes, only 5%. And then you can basically crush out what your opponent searches. ha -da! And it's not that hard to deal with. But moving on, number two. And there are two. And yes, my number one choice is going to be a little bit biased compared to this. Wind up Carriers and Mighty. Ban the Hunter, and I'm okay with this. Even not ban the Hunter, I'm okay with this. Wind ups could use the love. They just could. What at most is this really going to do? Make them a strong tier three, tier two? Okay, the deck is still fun to play. You put it out one. Effect for the Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbit. Um, the 30 other cards negate it like everything else. And yes, that's not a viable way of counteracting things. But hey, you could still do it. Wind Up Carriers and Mighty is a product of Konami's. I hit this for so long ago, I don't remember it's even on the list. Because I didn't even fucking bother to look at the list. I just slapped it together. That's what Konami does half the time. Do not bullshit me. You know it's true. Half the time, they only look at the top decks and go, How do we sell this more? Oh, man, those cards don't matter. Those old cards don't matter. Just put the new stuff. Just put the new stuff. And that's what it comes down to. But we're smarter than that. We're much smarter than that. Wind up, <laughs> wind up Carriers and Mighty can easily come back to one and not really cause any issues at all. I can't really see an issue happening with it unless there's a giant wind up loop, which again, a hunter. I believe it's Hunter. Anyway, back to the point. Let's get to number one. Chaos Emperor fucking Dragon. So 
damn late to the party Konami is with this one. They eroded it. You can't use any other effects after his effect goes off. Therefore, Light Pulsar Dragon interaction is gone. Hmm. But Ryu, aren't you a Chaos Dragon player and isn't that being a little bit biased? No, I did my research and I know. OCG has a set 3. Yes, OCG is insane. Yes, that's what many of you TCG players will say. I am a TCG OCG player, so that hence I say it that way. Let me break it down for you. At best, it's a 3000 beat stick that I can finish you off with, but most of the time you'll probably just effect fill that effect. Or you'll bottomless or notice or one of the other 30 effects. I don't know, Trap Tricks Nightmare hold it away. That's a thing. Okay, I wipe everyone's field and we start fresh. Unless I stack my deck, that top deck card may just be the worst top deck card of my entire Yu-Gi-Oh! career. Because let's be honest with each other. Advantage matters. And most of the meta decks right now could not give two shits about Chaos Emperor Dragon. That burn damage, that's cute. That's nice. I have 30 ways of negating it. And again, I know that's not a viable way of saying, hey, he's okay to come back. At best, you can search him with Eclipse Wyvern. Yes, I'm aware of that. We could do that now with Red Eyes and Dark Arm. Oh, Dark Arm. Oh boy, Dark Arm. You know what's scarier than Chaos Emperor Dragon? Dark Arm at higher numbers. Trust me, it is. When Dark Arm hits at 2, that's an issue. When Chaos Ember Dragon hits at 3, it's not an issue. Because it's a 3,000 beat stick that most decks can either suck up or put back or just deal with. Go look at the OCG, go try it for yourself, and you'll see what I mean. With the errata in place, Chaos Ember Dragon is a former shell of what he used to be. Hence, to me, he is the most deserving card to return. You guys may have a different opinion. I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. So get active! And I will see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully you guys came out for the shrum today. And I will see you later. If you didn't come out for the shrum, we'll probably do one tomorrow after I record Stock Market. And you can find the link down below because we're trying to get to 100 followers. But thank you for watching as always. And I'm out for now. See you later. Bye-bye. Peace.